know, there's a lot of how to's about how to make chainmail armor. That's basically the one type of armor everyone seems to want to wear at Renaissance and warping events and all that. That's not the only type of armor that was around at the time. Um, so this is going to be basically a little how-to to make other types of armor relatively easily and cheaply in your own garage. Um, our first project is going to be scale mail. Scale mail was um, one of the first types of mail armor that we can date back to the ancient Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians. Um, so that was the armor of kings, kind of like that was the plate mail of the Bronze and Copper Age. Uh, so, but as with anything, and, and the metallurgy and the technology advancing, the armor slowly, but slowly filtered down to the foot soldier and became a basic another type of foot soldier armor, while other armors became more prestige for the kings. So, with no further ado, um, we will start this project. Um, there's good, of course, with any project, you're going to be needing materials and you're going to be needing equipment to do this type of stuff. So, what I'm going to show you first is what you need and how to go about starting it. All right. So, the first thing that you're going to be needing is is a couple of different items. One is going to be an electric electric shear cutter because Trust me, I've used regular hand shears. It works, but it's very painful. You only can do a few pieces here and there. With the electric shear, it helps cut down on the time and it saves your hand. You're gonna need a couple of ball-peen hammers, a punch, a regular pair of hand shears, a pair of vice grips, and pencil, and of course, the most important aspect, a template. You're also going to probably be, you're also going to be needing some other important equipment for your own safety. This is, includes a pair of a pair of eye protection, a pair of gloves because you're going to be handling very sharp pieces of metal, and a pair of earplugs because it's going to be loud and you're going to be doing a lot of hammering and everything like that. So let us start with what the what type of um, metal you're going to need. Okay. So I showed you the, what you need, the equipment wise. So now you're going to ask what type of metal we're going to be using. Well, what I got here is 16 gauge stainless steel. It's probably as close to what they were using back in the ancient times to what we can equip now. Uh, granted, it wasn't stainless steel, and it wasn't stainless steel. It was iron, but the consistency is pretty close to it. Uh, you also can go for either 14 or 20 gauge steel too, because that's relatively falls into the same category. Um, but of course, 14 gauge steel is going to be a lot harder to cut, and you're going to probably be needing stronger stuff, stronger cutting items than what I have at the moment. And 20 gauge is lighter, and it is easier to cut, but it's going to be a little bit weaker. All right, so you have your piece of metal down, and you're going to, and you're ready to start cutting. First thing you got to do is grab your template, and right here is mine. Um, I use iron because the edges don't fray like cardboard or oak tag or anything like that uh, and it usually and it keeps it relatively close okay so you have you have your template you throw it down on the piece and you try and make it as even as you can now get your pencil make the straight make the pieces as straight as you can now I forgot about this and that is you need to get a ruler straight edge kind of like this all right because it helps make sure that the lines are straight. You want to try and keep the lines as straight as possible because if you start making it the angles off into different directions, the pieces won't line up when you want to put on the final product. But it's also though, don't kill, don't beat yourself up if it's a little bit off. You're human, just like me, and just like anything else. And plus, it adds a bit of like that. This was tooled by a real human being instead of produced by machinery. So. What you want to do is try and line it, try and straight, make it straight. Make the ends, keep the ends straight as possible. Okay. Now, and then on the bottom where the piece that will be shown, just try and make it as straight as possible. The reason you can't use this piece is because it really can't reach into these things. It can't really angle it off. You can do one side but not the other. So don't go crazy about that. Alright, now you want to get your regular pair of cutting shears, your tin snips. 
that piece. Cut the pieces that you can. Like I said, you can use these to cut the whole thing, but trust me, I learned the hard way. It really hurts after a while, and it's not worth it. So you cut those. Now you got it. Now you got a piece that's starting to grow. All right. Now, that's where. Now is where you need your safety safety goggles and your earplugs because this is where the industrial part starts getting it gets involved. Okay, get your pair of electric shears, such as, and then you also want to get a pair, hand, one glove to hold up so that when you cut, you're not going to slice your hand off in the process if you accidentally do anything. Okay, so now, got that. Cut it one way. And also make sure you don't cut the wire, that'd be bad. And voila, you have your piece. Okay, as you can see, we have our pieces right here. But as you also can see, we've got very sharp edges and more importantly, the piece is all bent out of shape. First thing that you got to do is get your pair, your pair of shears and then just cut the ends off. Because those sharp ends, if you fall wrong, they will dig right into you and it is very painful and it actually could puncture your skin and that's not good. And that is not good. Even though with the edges cut, the edges are still very sharp, so watch yourself with it. Um, I've cut myself to the bone. I've had metal slivers in my fingers. It is not a pleasant feeling. Luckily, it's stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about tetanus. Okay, once you get the ends cut off, you want to get a pair of your, your vice grips. Ball peen hammer. I only have a, I have a vice grip. I don't have an anvil, unfortunately. This can work and everything like that. You also can use a railroad tie, which I got floating around here, but I don't know where it is. Um, but also an anvil. Anvils can go range from 75 to 125, depending on the weight and the size of them. Um, I would suggest if you're really into this, go buy one. I haven't got one because I just don't have the money. But what you want to do is make sure that you have it down pretty straight and just... So you get a piece that's relatively and you have a piece that is now straight, which is what you want. Alright. After that, what you want to do then is what you're gonna need is still your ball peen hammer. Punch. Where the hell is my punch? Ah, here we go. And also, another thing I would suggest for everyone: keep your place organized. As you can see, even even though I had this place, even though I had my ideas organized and everything like that, it doesn't work with me sometimes. All right. So what you want to do now is you have your flat piece. You want to line it up. your punch, find the center of it, line up your punch, got, got one, two, As you can see, I'm doing this by sight, by eye. Like I said, you do something long enough, you will just basically learn how to do it without measuring. But I would also suggest, though, is that if you're starting this, measure it out because eyeing it up is one of the things that you just got to 
work on and eventually it will come to you. Some people it just comes naturally, some have to work at it. I had to work at it and even then my eyeing is still not the greatest. All right, now, as you can see, I have the four hole, I have six holes here. I will show you a reason for these six holes in a few minutes. But right now, now that we got these punches going, our next place is we're going over to the drill press.